Well, Jesse, I wanted to start off by saying congratulations on the film. Um, I've had a chance to sit down and watch it, and it's a great film, so congratulations. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, I'm glad you got to see it. It's awesome. So, mate, tell us a little bit. Where did the idea for Stolen Valley come from, and how did you first get started on the project? Yeah, well, I've, I've always wanted to make movies. I've worked in commercials and documentaries for over 10 years. And um, I had another project I was lining up to shoot in Nashville, Tennessee, where I'm from. And um, the whole thing fell through. And I, I was I was set on making a film by that year. So I actually I have a friend in South Utah um, who's a location manager. And I've worked with him before on a National Geographic project. And he took me around to all these really cool locations. And he, he always said, you know, when you're ready to make a movie, come here. So I literally just started researching. Like I, I had spent almost a year on a different script. And when that project fell through, it was it was a tough pill to swallow. Um, but the rebound was, OK, we can make a movie there. We can do a lot of exteriors. We can we have access to a ton of locations. What would it look like to write a script for that specific area? Um, and I just spent a lot of time researching the area, and it doesn't take long to find um, how American settlers have treated indigenous peoples in all of North America, but that region specifically, um, the Navajo and the Diné culture, they just have so much history there. And um, so I, I wanted to make a film around um, those people and and I kind of went into it asking what would it look like to redeem the relationship uh, between the indigenous peoples of that area so that that's really where it all started so from for the screenwriters that listen to our show talk us through that journey a little bit of course you wanted that was the theme that you wanted to explore with the film and something that you wanted to to do where did you go from there then to get this story that we that we see that revolves around Lupe and Maddie yeah, so from there it was, uh, you know, how do I make this interesting and entertaining? And the, the whole area looks like a Western yeah. film. Um, there's these beautiful, you know, vistas and, um, you know, red uh, sand. And it's just a, it's a very, um, the whole yeah, the whole thing, like if, if you've seen Hell or High Water, yes. all of that I think was shot in, or was set in North Texas or West Texas, but I think they shot a lot of it in Arizona or new mexico um and it all kind of looks like that um that vibe um with you know there's more plateaus and, and more um um you know mountainous terrain in south utah uh than there is in, in that film but in terms of like a, a color palette it was very similar to that and i was very inspired by that film by the look and feel of it and um so yeah from from there it was uh packaging you know this theme into a exciting um narrative that had a you know a, a desperate need for you know what is lupe um what is she fight like what springs her into act two is the desire for her to save the one strong relationship he has she has and that's with her mother and I really, I, so I wanted to spend a lot of time setting up how much her mother meant to her and how strong that was, and then push her to the limits of what would she be willing to do to save her. Um, and then in the middle of that, you know, bring in her relationship with Maddie and then bring in her relationship with her grandmother and her Navajo family and the heritage that she connects with there. Um, and then have to, you know, confront some of the demons from her own mother and some decisions she had made and some people she had hurt. And so I just I, I like the idea of like the more she fights to save her, the more she finds out about who she is, about how who Lupe is and who Adamina is yep. and who Maddie is. So you're, you're really just getting closer and closer to these characters, you know, the, throughout the entire film. Jesse, you mentioned before about your background in, in shooting television commercials, and I always found it interesting when I was at film school, because when our um, lecturers would talk to us about, uh, today we're going to do an, a television commercial for this product, I used to see a lot of the filmmakers in the class kind of grown, but I was always kind of interested, because I saw every commercial and every music video clip as a short film. How did... Um, 
your experience with television commercials help you with your first feature? Well, it helped a lot. Um, I've spent a lot of time on set and a lot of the commercials I, I, I've been, I've had the privilege of doing some well-funded commercials that have a big crew on them. And, you know, it's, and it's all about, um, you know, the talent and the product and getting it at the right place at the right time and being as efficient as possible. And it's, it's pretty well funded, but most of the work I've done is, has been pretty, uh, scrappy. It seems like a good, word for it and most of my documentary and and commercial work where you know a a lot of it you don't have a crew of more than a few people and you're and you're really pushing the limits of like how much can we pull off with the resources that we have and how how do we get the most that we can out of this um now that doesn't always mean cheap cameras or cheap equipment but it it does mean like I, i feel like as a director and as a you know director who produces um, you have to look at your budget and say, how do we maximize this to get as much value out of it as possible? So that mindset that goes into commercials and goes into documentaries was absolutely applied to this film. And um, we were very, I, I, I did all the initial schedules because I'm so used to doing scheduling. Um, and I, Kaylee Bailey was the AD on this, uh, on, on the Stolen Valley, and she was fantastic. But I, I did all the first passes of the schedules, then would send them to her and she'd go and say, well, what about this? What, what about, like I, I worked hand in hand with her on it because I had a very um, specific vision for not just how it was going to look, but how we were going to pull it off and for, maybe even more so for how we were going to pull it off because it's so, it's so hard to make a movie. And, and this one, it was a huge, you know, um, swing. Like we were trying to get so much done um, with a, a lot of limitations on it. Um, so yeah, I, I think that I think that attitude of like it's important to to not settle to get as much as you can out of what you have to stretch every dollar as yeah. far as you can and to have confidence in it to to know like, hey, we can pull this off and and we have people on the project who who backed out because and to, um, the DP of the film actually backed out because as we got closer and closer to it, he said, I just, I just don't see how I'd worked with them just briefly before, not in a big capacity, but he backed out one week before we started. He did the scout with us a month of prep, all of that. And when he looked at it, he's like, guys, this is a little too far. I don't know how we're going to make our days. And that's why I, I ended up DPing the project because I've done that as a you know director for documentaries and commercials quite a bit where I'm, I'm so, um, um, involved with all of it that I, I am able to pull that up with a great support crew, with the great gaffer, great ACs I've worked with, great steady cam ops when we have the privilege of being on steady cam. Um, so it was, it was a huge team effort and, and oh, and really that even bigger than all the learnings, the crew that I worked with on this film, um, I'd say 80% of them I have worked with for at least three years, some, you know, almost 10 years in a, on other projects. So I, I think for, you know, people in student films or people working on commercials who want to be in a feature someday, like you're going to lean on the relationships that you build um, wherever you build them. And commercials and documentaries are a great way to do that and, and to kind of test, you know, your abilities and harness your skills and, and all of that. Definitely. And I guess you would have found as well it helps working with a low budget because I know for me, coming from a background of shooting music videos, um, in the early days, you'd have a band come to you and say, we've only got $1,000 to spend on the video, but you'd have to try and use that $1,000 to make the music clip good enough to be able to be broadcast on television. Was that something that you found as well coming from that background that it helped you make $1,000 look like a million dollars on the screen? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think so. And, and I, I hope so. I, I hope it looks a lot, you know, better than I, I hope we were able to execute it in a way where people can see past the flaws and that people can, um, you know, hopefully not see the limitations of it and see it and, and go, wow, they really, they really uh, had to figure that one out. And, cause, and you see a lot of movies like that where you're like, okay, this, this is where it was lacking. And so I think Stolen Valley has those moments for sure. But our hope was to minimize them as much as possible. And, 
Yeah, absolutely. Like it's that's I think that's for everybody. I, I don't think at any level that that goes away. I think you're you're always trying to see, okay, can we pull this off for the money we have? Yeah. I, I heard some quote about um um Sicario and uh it was Roger Deakins talking uh about it and he was talking about how low budget it was. I think this is on his podcast and and I think somebody kind of laughed at it. And he goes, no, really. Like, I was in the back of a van holding the camera, you know, strapped down, trying to pull the shot. And he, he said, really? Like, you're just trying to, no matter what level it's at, you're trying to see, like, what can we pull off for the money that we have? And that that made me smile to think of one of the greatest, you know, cinematographers. And, yeah, he finds himself in, in the same, you know, place sometimes. <laughs> Now, the other key to this film working, of course, was to find the perfect actresses to play Lupe and Maddie. Tell us a little bit about how you went about that casting process and how you landed on the two leads that you ended up with. Yeah, well, we got really fortunate with uh, Brisa because she, so we had quite a few people submit. Uh, I think the, we had the most submissions for Carl and for Maddie's role. There's a lot of... Uh, blonde haired uh, a- actresses who wanted to do that. And there was a ton of, you know, bad guys who wanted to play that role. But there's, you know, there's there's less uh, actresses and less um, Latino, act- la- Latina actresses and less indigenous and even less indigenous actresses who are out there and, tra- and, and auditioning for, for things. So Brisa, it was, it was amazing because... I was blown away by her performance in the self tape she sent in. Um, but also when we looked at her resume or her, um, uh, list of experience, like, uh, skills and things that she can do, she had a folklorico dance background. She had some firearms, uh, experience. She, uh, her dad rode motorcycles and she's, and she said, yeah, I can go practice. Like I haven't, written but i can go practice riding and i can work on it and i can do the mechanic thing and and um, so she was able like all these specific things we were like how are we going to find a half mexican half indigenous woman who does all these specific you know things and she did all of them and she's a fantastic actress she's very good at just getting into um a character like no matter the circumstances that she and some of the scenes that we shot in um, we, we had snowstorms hit us Well, we were in, cause in the desert, like we'd get 80 degrees in the, you know, day and, uh, all the way down to freezing at night. So it was very extreme. And she, she has an incredible ability to block all that out and just get in the zone, um, immediately. And she has a lot of emotional scenes too, and where she's crying and, um, she was, yeah, she's just a real pleasure to work with and a, a really good talent. Uh, then, and then Allie's role, that one, we spent more time on different uh, kind of angles as to who that character could be. We looked at more rough ones, more more muscular, more um, uh, intimidating kind of appearing Maddies. And where we land, I'm so so happy that that we picked uh, Ali Sutton for the role. She's just fantastic with it. And she's an absolute pleasure to work with. And the thing that set her apart from everybody else was her ability to to be funny quickly. And yep. to go from this, you know, I'm fierce and I'm intimidating and I've got a gun to your face to uh, they get in the car and she's joking about, you know, man, you're fast. Where'd you learn to move like that? And she's teasing her and she's making jokes and she's smiling. And um, and some of those scenes have, have resonated the most, I think, with audiences. And I'm, I'm proud, very proud of, of some of those and how like when they're driving in the truck and um, how they're able to connect and just the chemistry that they had. So I'm, I'm glad that we made the choice that we did with her. And um, again, both of them, just fantastic people and amazing to work with. Definitely. That chemistry really comes across in the scene in the bar. Like you said, there, there's tension in that scene, yeah, yeah. but there's also some lighthearted moments as well. Yeah, I really like that scene, and it's it was one um, that got the most scrutiny, really at every level, script level, and um, on set. It was very difficult to shoot that, and um, in the editing process, we we tried. Okay, do we really need this? Can we get in and out of the bar faster? Do we need them to go there? And we we really, you know, I I like that I, I like that it's lighthearted and it takes a break from 
the um, suspense that the film has. I like that it doesn't take itself too seriously. But I think it's also very important for their character development, where you have somebody who's not... Um, she she pushes people away is is Maddie's character and she's been hurt by people before and that you know she has these walls up because of that and in that scene all of the things that she tries to do to get them out of that situation she has to fight her way out she has to yell her way out she tries to pull her gun out multiple times they don't work and it's only hurting their chances of getting away so yeah. that's the first time where she really has to trust Lupe yeah and I, I think that scene is so important for them coming together and for her learning, okay, maybe I don't have the answers to everything, and maybe if we work together, we can actually do something greater. Definitely. Now, Jesse, I know we're running out of time very, very quickly, so just two quick questions for you. First of all, the film has already picked up uh, 12 awards at, at multiple film festivals. What does that mean to you as a filmmaker, seeing your film become a success like that at a film festival? Oh, it's super exciting. It's, it's a big honor. And um, you just, you know, you work so hard on something like this, and you. Re- and I, I still say this when, when people watch it. I say, oh, you, you didn't leave halfway through. And I go, awesome. Like, <laughs> that is such great news. Because when it's so hard to do, and when you're editing, you know, we spent the, you spend the longest amount of time on editing. The shoot, you know, it was like 25, 26 shoot days. And then it was over six months of editing. And you have to live with all the choices that you made. And there's so many things that you would do different. And you get to the end of it and you go, you know what? We did the best we could with it. And we really hope that it resonates and that the heart and that the theme of what we wanted to do comes through. So when it, and when it is honored with awards and, and um, it, it's just, it's, it's, it's a big relief. It's very humbling. It's very, um, and it means so much to the whole team too. Like it's, it's a very proud moment to come together with a group of people who, you know, n- not just me, but a big group of people who worked on the film for years now. And to look back on that and say, yes, this was honored at this festival, that festival. And it's um, it's it's very yeah, it's, it's very proud. I'm 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 very proud, and it's it's very uh, encouraging to be honored that way. Definitely. And Jesse, to finish off, what would you like to say to our listeners out there who are about to sit down and watch the Stolen Valley? Oh, I'd say I hope you enjoy it. I'd say I hope you get to finish it. And um, uh, I'd also say. Uh, I feel like um, it gets better at the midpoint and after that and um, uh, stick around for that for sure because I, <laughs> I think there's some exciting turns in it and I think um, I, I think it's a movie that's worth being given a chance on because of what it's about because of what it says and um, yeah I, I, I think it's a movie that matters so I hope you enjoy it. <laughs>